We are the lab doctors. I'm Amanda. I'm Dorothy. And I'm Zhao Yong. We are biomedical researchers who realize we still have a lot to learn about science. So why not join us on this quest? Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. On this episode of Today We Learn, we will be talking about motion sickness. In case you missed it, Today We Learn episodes are the ones where we try and figure out answers to questions based on our current knowledge. We take a break, do our research, and come back in the second part of this episode to tell you the fact check science. Okay, so why motion sickness? Basically, I was looking through like mm. Instagram and I saw that a lot of people started posting about the cruise to nowhere. Are those <laughs> still happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like everyone's going and I think people are less scared of, you know, the incident where the COVID was spreading in the cruise. So what is a cruise to nowhere? It's just a cruise to the open sea where then you can open the casino because it's international waters. Oh, is yeah. that why? <laughs> yeah, you cannot gamble like at the shore. So they will close the whole casino in the ship uh-huh. and then they will like lock all the money and stuff like that. I think oh. it's the whole maybe you're on a holiday as well without being oh, yeah, dangerous yeah, yeah, with sure. spreading COVID maybe. They have to take the test, la, the swap test before going on the ship. But anyway, so about cruises, then uh-huh. I just recall like my previous cruise experience and I'm like motion sickness. I mean, I think international waters near Singapore would not be so choppy, but like if you thought about sailing to international waters uh-huh. from where I went to last time, London, and then I sailed out. Uh-huh. Oh, my motion sickness was super bad. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I don't know if I'm ready for this cruise to nowhere. So I was just interested, why do we get motion sickness? Mm -hmm. So it's an inner ear thing, right? Because, you know, there's the part of your inner ear (laughs) that um, helps you balance. And if that's off, then you feel disoriented. Yeah. There's some liquid in the ear, is it? Yeah. Yeah, I think it is. Is it vestibular sensing? Actually, I can't really remember what the term is. It starts with a V. Vestibular sounds so legit. Yeah. I honestly can't remember. I don't know. Amanda, like, explained the, the, the ear like the swimming pool oh, episodes the swimming episodes right, right, yeah. or, or, or orifices, orifices. orifices. <laughs> and I completely forgot about the ear now. okay so the only thing I talked about was the outer ear the middle ear and the inner ear so mm. for the swimming episode it was just the outer ear and the middle ear that was affected so the outer yeah. ear is everywhere from the ear canal to the eardrum mm-hmm. and then the middle ear is after the eardrum and then the inner ear is near your brain I think mm. which I didn't really go into and I didn't yeah. really research so I think that's the inner ear is the part oh, that is so we're covering new grounds now <laughs> yes of ear <laughs> if anyone cares but that's all I know yeah so I did take a module on this previously and I if I'm not wrong there are receptors in this inner ear and mm-hmm. there are fluids that move in different axes so okay. depending on how the fluid moves and at what axis it's moving at so then it tells our body whether or not we are you know upright or lying down or basically oh, going in proprioception in, is that what it's called yeah, oh, knowing where your body is in the a plane oh, of not, space. Not necessarily. Oh no, no, no that's proprioception is like you know yeah. where your fingers are in a plane yeah, of yeah, space yeah, 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 yeah. relative to your it's own body. Basically, but this is balance, mm, right? This is more yeah balance and where basically your body is facing where it's at. Yeah. So it's purely I I mean. There's a bit of physics in this. So if you are in constant motion at a constant speed, right? Okay. Then your inner ear fluids will also be traveling at, you know, there's no acceleration. So basically you're- It's inertia, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you feel stationary. Yeah, you feel stationary. And that's why um, if you're on trains and stuff and and the, the speed is constant, the, mm-hmm. the key is that the speed has to be constant then after a while you will achieve a type of balance a type of equilibrium in the ear so is and it so like, you won't feel it is it like your inner ear it looks like a jar there's like a mini jar of water and mm-hmm. that's, that's how I thought of it like there's a mini jar of water yeah, and yeah. it's just moving the direction you're moving so if let's say you shake or what like so you're talking about constant motion I yeah. was thinking more of like a curvy road or something like that yeah correct then correct, the correct. water in the jar would like splash splash yeah and then that's why you get yeah, yeah, yeah. Then the receptors in that, I can't. Re- I hope it is vestibular. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We'll find out. Yeah, we'll two. find out. Um, in that organ would detect this change in motion, and then they would feed back to your brain. Yeah. So is it your brain getting confused if the water goes splish splash? Yeah. So why we get motion sickness is because then there is motion in this inner ear, but huh. basically you're not moving, and your brain knows that you're not moving. And so when it detects that you're not moving, but there is movement in in the inner ear, mm-hmm. your brain immediately thinks you're poisoned. Uh-huh. So most poisons cause this kind of 
because disorientation. Yeah, dis- not really, not oh, necessarily disorientation, but like maybe you're falling mm. because you can't control your body and it thinks that, you know, you're poisoned because you're shifting about and there's motion when you're not moving. Mm. And so that's why the, the reaction is to get nausea, to get vomiting, to, to eject the poison from your body, oh. from the digestive system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. So that's why there's this motion sickness response because it thinks you're poisoned, but you're not. You're just moving because there's a bigger outer thing that moves you. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I was completely like, I didn't understand why it would make us feel nauseous yeah, yeah, yeah. and vomiting it would help. Yeah. Was this in the module? Uh, I think so. Is it because it's remember. evolutionarily like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. In the past, we get poisoned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, because last time, I guess it's like you don't really know what type of foods will give you poison, uh, like, mm. would poison you or what type of foods are ba- have gone bad and then, oh. yeah, stuff like that. So, wow. yeah. I'm quite convinced by this. Yeah, me too. Even though I think I, I know what I'm talking <laughs> you about. You nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the vestibular thing. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Honestly, that sounds pretty legit as yeah. well. Yeah, but I feel like now I'm thinking of ATM vestibules. You know, like ATM. The but part I... of the bank and I, I, I'm starting to think it's not vestibular anymore. <laughs> well, we'll find out. Yeah. Is there a difference between seasick, road sick, plane sick? Yeah, so I, honestly, I don't think so because it's all, you know, in, in the... the hopefully vestibular <laughs> organ and then so maybe it is how severe it is maybe mm-hmm. because uh, depending on how the vehicle is moving whether or not yeah. the speed is constant or it's, it differs so seasick so would be the worst right I mean probably also so. because there's more axis for it to yeah up down and left in. right yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah whereas it's if you think of a road or a plane it's generally quite yeah but maybe the plane that's why maybe it's like at takeoff or when mm. it lands, oh, you right, kind of right. start feeling it a bit more mm. because, you know, there's a change in, in velocity or speed. Right. Yeah, there's a change in that. And Basically, then, when your body is move, not moving but feels like uh, it's moving. Yeah, yeah accel- acceleration. So when there's acceleration or deceleration, then, mm. then you will detect that. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so with motion sickness, I'm sure everyone has heard of a certain remedy or something that yeah. you can do to alleviate it right mm. but do y'all really know how it works though honestly no okay so maybe <laughs> we'll start with a few that mm. um dorothy curated yeah. yeah so so because i went on cruises before and i have like a phobia of it because the cruise i went to the water was so choppy and it's the first time i vomited from like motion sickness yeah. and it was crazy because i was two days on the ship i couldn't i couldn't move. Oh. <laughs> and i was just like Bleh. So um, oh, I have a question is it worse if you're above water or below water so you know in the room below water I think huh? it's people tell me it's worse if you're below mm. I can't remember why but your experience I I don't know I just went to the top I just tried anything people tell me to yeah. do I went to the top of the ship uh-huh. and then like cause they say it would rock a bit more and maybe slower compared to below like the rocking would huh, be but wouldn't really? the top wouldn't be the most the be the, yeah, unstable because it's furthest away from the centre yeah. of mass right of yeah. the ship yeah but maybe you can see the you know how sometimes they yeah. say if you're in the car and then you you're far. going through a winding road if you see the curves oh, you then away. you can kind of and tell your brain maybe yeah. like where it's swinging yeah, yeah. I, I, honestly I'm not too sure but what does I, that even work what I do here for <laughs> road no sickness idea. or car sickness is, is to focus on a very distant object yeah. so if you can focus on a distant object and because the the amount of that object moves is less so you feel less like you're so that's actually how it moving works. and then you yeah, are tricking your bad. brain yeah, to yeah, 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 think yeah. that you are not moving you're not actually moving yeah maybe the one that I've heard is you kind of anticipate the winding road so mm. if it's swerving right then you just think in your mind okay I'm going right mm. and then that, that's why they say people who drive generally don't feel yeah, as yeah, yeah. sick as the people who right, the passengers because they know it's gonna happen yeah so I think that's also a bit of tricking your your brain oh, to yeah, yeah. move That's so with true. the uh, uh, the winding yeah, yeah. road. Yeah, so yeah. is that all psychological then? It might be because it is more or less psychological, right? Because if it's our brain telling us that we got poisoned, but then if we can tell our brains that actually no, there's just nothing happening. Yeah, and this is what is happening yeah. and this is what to expect yeah. and don't think that it's poison and don't <laughs> make me vomit. Yeah, I think, I think that's how people train and overcome motion sickness. Ah. I mean, you know, yeah. In the past, like people, if you're a fisherman, your family uh-huh. would be fisherman. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, and I'm like, it cannot be. Everyone won't get motion sickness, right? but I think it's like you're either you're born with it or you train from young. Yeah. Or you overcome this and Basically, psychologically. Basically, you learn to deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's you're yeah. able to overcome it. 
Yeah, but going back to this um, anticipation or whatever, maybe that's why it's worse and a shit because there really isn't anything else to focus on in yeah, the middle of the ocean. There's you know? no landmark yeah. or yeah. something that is stationary yeah, that you can that look you can. at. And horizon. you can't really see any winding rope because if it's open water, yeah, 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 yeah. you will just see the waves and yeah, the yeah, yeah. waves don't really tell you anything about the direction and the axis that it's moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. It was torturous. So Psychological. Anyway. Yeah. So what? that's one of it, maybe. maybe. Yeah. yeah. But one of the remedies, like people told me, was acupuncture mm. at the wrist. So actually, like if you go Watson's or something, they sell this uh-huh. wristband that has like a bead and you just put it on your wrist at the correct acupuncture point. I think like three fingers above your palm or something mm. like that. Wait, so you self-administer, you just stab it into no, yourself? No, it, it's a bead. So it's, it's, you, don't, you don't stab <laughs> it into your but it's like just pressing there. It's like, also, it's like pressure yeah, point. Yeah, the, pressure okay, point. Okay, okay. Not a needle. Oh, I thought you <laughs> that would be very dangerous needle. on the ship. Yeah. On a oh, ship. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. So I tried that, but I've never experienced um, another cruise uh-huh. like with that wristband that, that was so bad the seasick yeah. I mean the, the motion of the boat so I don't know if it's a good try but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean I do understand like how acupuncture points and pressure points would relate to certain parts of your body mm. and so that was probably what would work for seasickness so yeah. maybe what you're saying is one part of the wrist may be connected to your ears ear or brain I, I don't know okay I'm not very sure how acupoints actually work because or it I mean, might just make you less nauseous oh it, it might, might be, be affecting your GI tract actually yeah, yeah, gastrointestinal so what do you guys think which one is oh I mean, yeah sorry GI uh, gastrointestinal I, I don't know that much about TCM and like IQ points or whatever so I think it may be maybe don't, don't hunt me down it sure. may be placebo <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. no offence no, no offence really no offence But actually I'm more leaning towards gastrointestinal because usually TCM they are targeting the symptoms not the cause oh, right oh that's true that's they, true I thought that's more western medicine mm, no it depends western medicine might yeah. block okay so we can talk about western medicine definitely mm-hmm. we have seasick pills yeah 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 and I don't really know. I, I feel like it's just some sugar pill. <laughs> Placebo. Placebo. <laughs> yeah. Placebo. <laughs> but maybe it blocks the receptors in the ear that you're talking um, about. I think it's more likely that it blocks the, again, the GI tract. More likely that the it blocks. Yeah. The nauseous. No, but it's always taken preventively. Like they say, if you are already seasick and you take the pill, it's not going to help that much. Oh. So I feel like it's a preventive. You, you're blocking the receptors already. Maybe, yeah. Mm. Or maybe like Panadol, they don't know how it works. It just works. <laughs> and everyone just accepts that it's safe and it works so let's just use is, it I, I feel which is the most like most likely the basis for TCM is like you try different things you press different parts of your body and it's like oh this seems to work then that's their IQ point for that part of the body you know yeah. and the last one that I actually heard of the last remedy was going into the water or the swimming pool so usually cruisers they have mm. like a swimming pool mm-hmm. just jump into it they say it would work and did the, you try it? I didn't try it what if you vomit in the pool? I think I was <laughs> oh. like already so uncomfortable I didn't want to move and then you have to change in your swimming costume and then you have to go into the water with people and then you might vomit in the pool <laughs> it was so bad it the whole everyone. ship had vomit bags everywhere that makes sense that's smart it was like so well prepared yeah. <laughs> so like apparently um, the explanation is that cause the water mm-hmm. in the swimming pool will move accordingly to the water in the sea yeah. so then if you're in the swimming pool you won't be subjected to the boat's movement you would be following the water's movement so you don't really move with the boat and oh. therefore you don't get seasick that's what I was thinking like when we were talking about remedies I was like should the ship actually have this gyroscopic tank that you can <laughs> that go into or, or like you know how gyroscopes work where right in the middle the thing doesn't really move even even though everything else is moving very crazily. Oh, is and that so in the swimming pool? Is, is, yeah, I, I don't know if that is the same, you know? I mean, I, I guess there's a bit of that effect. Uh-huh. But then I think a gyroscope might be better because you're right in the centre and you're still not moving even though, you know, everything else is moving. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you all have seen, like, camera gimbals. And no, how like, uh, oh, yeah, birds yeah, yeah. as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, and birds' heads. You yeah. know, like, oh, when yeah. you shift we that gyroscope. We always talk about the chicken, chicken, head, the chicken, chicken head, head, head and bird heads when we talk about yeah. gyroscopic yeah. things. Listeners, go Google, like, uh, chicken head Or just look movement. at the pigeons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, when yeah. you shift the entire body, the head still stays right at the same spot. So yeah. that's, I guess, in essence like a bit of how gyroscopes that's work. how camera stabilizers yeah, work yeah, as camera well camera stabilizers yeah. which is um, they are called gimbals that's how they work also no matter how you move the camera still stays stationary mm. yeah so that's I'm like would that be beneficial for people no but if your entire body stands on that thing yeah, yeah, yeah. 
then your head would I mean we're not we're not we can't uh, function as good as the you chicken you have to deprive all the senses I would say yes, so I mean, sensory deprivation sensory deprivation tank in a gyroscopic ball yeah, you just have to hold your head in place of which then the can't. gyroscopic tank you can't. will not it's work it's like basically you must do like uh, I don't know what's yeah, that yeah you must look like the chicken that's yeah, 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 not holding your head your head must be like <laughs> at the same spot and how are you compensating for like listeners Chaeyoung is trying to <laughs> dancing all the time <laughs> but it's so <laughs> amusing <laughs> wait I don't understand the physics of how the swimming pool water would be moving with the water no. in the sea because, because the of boat gravity. is yeah. built to be stable right no but when the boat is so big it's gonna sway when you're, when you're sailing then how come when I'm not in the pool I'm not swaying. Sorry, this might be a dumb question. How come it only affects the because water in the pool? Because you're not suspended. It's like the whole zero G kind of understanding, oh. right? I, I don't know. I don't know if that's it. Because again, physics, I'm like... Uh, Clearly, you can tell <laughs> we are biologists. <laughs> but I think going also to the center of the boat. As in, like... I, yeah. Um, the f- Above water, underwater. Does that matter? I don't know. Maybe you can find the middle floor, but I don't know. But <laughs> I still, basically, center. Yeah. Because... At the sides of the boat, which is usually the windows, right? Mm. They would be rocking the most. Yeah, because so of the axis that it rocks at, yeah. right? Mm. Like, um, just take up a water bottle and then uh, hold it right in the center and tilt it. Mm. And you can see that at the center is where the movement is the least, right? Yeah. Mm. Okay, cool. Yeah, so we like talk about so many things. And let me just summarize because I think mm-hmm. we hopefully hit the nail. <laughs> but we have to find out like why we get motion sickness. Mm-hmm whether there is a difference between the different kinds of motion sickness yep. and whether the remedies such as acupuncture at the wrist, seasick pills, um, what's active ingredient, what does it target, whether going into the water or the swimming pool in the cruise ship would help and whether you can train to overcome motion sickness. We'll answer all these in part two. Stay tuned. Hi everyone, welcome back to part two. So let's get right into it. First of all, why do we get motion sickness? Yeah, so why do we get motion sickness? Basically, what we mentioned previously was kind of more or less, right? Um, We know that in the inner ear, there is this vestibular system. It is the vestibular system yes. that detects um changes in movements and it is that different receptors on different axes that detect the motion of the inner ear fluid that determines where we are in, uh, in space, basically, in 3D space. Okay. Not outer space in <laughs> yeah so oh. yeah but um but that's not the only thing so we basically maintain balance from many different signals from our body it's not just the vestibular system it's also our visual system so we also take visual cues from where we are in 3d space and then there's also our sensory system mm. so basically our legs and our hands if we are in contact with any surfaces then we will also know kind of where we are grounded and rooted you know mm. Mm. so I think pro- proprioception as yeah, well yeah yeah exactly. like your brain knows where your body is in space so yeah. say if I lift my hand up and I close my eyes, I know that my hand is here. Yeah, it's, oh. yeah. it's like where it is in yeah. relative yeah. to the rest of your body. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's so the issue comes when there's this mix up of cues and our brain doesn't really know how to interpret that. Mm. So yeah. So that's why it's our inner ear fluids. So when in you know any vehicle or whatever in acceleration, there's gonna be motion in these fluids, and then um we feel that we are moving. But then yeah. let's say we are reading a book or we are looking down on our knees, then we see our body not not moving moving. Mm. and so there is this mix up of cues and Ah. that's why we start feeling like okay something is wrong because visually i don't feel like i'm moving but in the vestibular system i feel like i'm moving yeah and and so that's why there's this confusion and that's why you develop motion sickness and Mm. uh, previously i mentioned that motion sickness was our body's method of like you know thinking that we we got poisoned Mm. and yeah and that's more or less the the going theory for it okay is there then a difference between seasick, road sick, or plane sick, or whatever sick? <laughs> like some people, when they play games, right, they also get motion really? sickness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not only... Stop playing. <laughs> no, I just, just joking. <laughs> yeah, so we have a friend that, that does get motion sickness when they are you playing. You have a friend. First, no. You? He is we? your friend too. <laughs> he is our friend. Really? Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, 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 he has very bad motion sickness. Yeah, so when he plays first person shooters or first person games in general, he gets motion sickness when it gets too intense. <laughs> but there are also people who get <laughs> motion so sickness him. from VR games. Mm. So, oh. yeah, yeah. So that's also a part of, even though visually you feel like you see that you're moving, but maybe because physically, you know, your legs and your hands, you know that you're not moving. That's mm. why in VR, sometimes you get motion sickness as well. So... Basically, there's no difference. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I was, I I, when I chose this question yeah. and then I was uh, researching last night, uh-huh. I was thinking, oh, <laughs> that's all. <laughs> so I wanted to uh, add a bit, okay, uh-huh. so that I'm not so, I'm not the slacker here. <laughs> <laughs> so Troy was talking about the vestibular system, mm-hmm. right? So it's um, the cochlear and the semicircular canals in the inner ear. Mm-hmm. So like he said, it gives you information about rotational movements and acceleration. Mm-hmm. So this gives you a sense of balance and spatial orientation. So interestingly, Mm -hmm. individuals or animals without a functional vestibular system are immune to motion sickness. Because basically, you don't have the motion sensing organs in your inner ear. So motion sickness does not occur. Do you know of which animal? So I was trying to find that's uh-huh. the thing. So I went down a, a rabbit hole. But basically all higher order mammals are known to have vestibular system. Okay. And then some insects are also known to have vestibular system. So I, mm-hmm. I was thinking which animal doesn't <laughs> then I couldn't find I couldn't find which animal doesn't and what causes a non functional vestibular system. So I think probably people are still doing research. Yeah. But then like just to be safe, this is like what they say. So without a functional vestibular system, you won't get motion sickness. Mm. Starting to wonder if, if flies and all these creatures yes. get so flies is one of the sickness. insects that have a vestibular. Bad, yeah vestibular system, but whether they get motion sickness or not. Yeah. Can That's imagine? the thing. I don't know how whether animals. I feel like they do. Like if you <laughs> wet them, puke. they just go a bit crazy for a while, and then they'll just be like. Oh, because they, they are moving, but treat. yeah, and then you just oh. wet them. But is that because we are damaging them? <laughs> 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 Yeah, like, yeah like, if, how do you test? If a fly is on a train and it's moving, I feel like I'm talking about Inception. Oh, we are on a train and the train is taking us. <laughs> <laughs> but the fly is on the train and the train is moving. Would the fly be like, oh, what the heck is happening? I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Yeah, I don't know. It feels happy to be Does on the train. <laughs> also, they are, get off. they are not, if they're, even if they're on the train, uh, they're not being propelled by the train. Does it matter? It doesn't but make a difference. But we are not being propelled by the train. I know, but we are rooted to the ground of the train, you know? The but they are also rooted to the wall. Okay, let's, no, say, the not, fly, not, let's say the fly is not flying. Okay, if it's, like okay, on if the, it's not flying, yeah. I think that's a yeah. difference. Because if the fly is flying, yeah. then it doesn't matter whether they are on a train or in yeah, yeah, air, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, they yeah. are just in air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it has to be on the, yeah. on the wall. I guess we'll never know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hard to research also. So anyway... Yeah. Okay, so then we also went into a bit on how um, different motion sickness remedies and how they can help. So I guess the first one was TCM at acupuncture at the wrist, right? The yeah. acupuncture cushion, is it? Yeah. No, it's a wristband. Yeah, it, it, okay, yeah, the wristband. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently, like, there was a scientific study that tested whether these were working and, huh. like, they, they got people who are susceptible to motion sickness to try it and apparently it works. So I couldn't really find out how exactly acupuncture at that pressure point which is Mm -hmm. like three fingers above your wrist and then like in between the tendons would work but I searched in general how acupuncture works. So each acupuncture needle produces a tiny injury at the insertion site and although this is slight enough to cause no discomfort it's enough to trigger a signal to your immune response to act. And mm. this promotes circulation of, I guess, blood <laughs> to your mm. ar- to that area, uh-huh. wound healing, and then pain management. How exactly this particular acupuncture point connects to the ears and to the gastrointestinal system, uh-huh. I don't know. We're still <laughs> unsure. I hope some TCM gets uh, explains it to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're in TCM, the field of TCM, and if you want to... Inform us more. Sure. That's Please great. Do. Please come come on. <laughs> okay, so then I guess we talked about the Eastern medicine. Now let's talk a bit more about Western medicine and seasick pills. Okay, so for most medications, we generally find out what's the active ingredient and what does it target. Mm-hmm. So uh, most common motion sickness medications, the active ingredient is something that we've heard about constantly, which mm-hmm. is antihistamines. So the active ingredient in drugs like avomine is prometheus. Thiocate, and in Dramamine, it's Diamond Hydronate. 
you lost me there. Yeah, one of these things. <laughs> so basically, these two uh, active ingredients are antihistamines, which okay. are proven to be very effective as an anti-emetic, which means it prevents vomiting. Oh, yeah. Okay, and it has anti-motion sickness properties. Mm-hmm. And it commonly reduces symptoms such as nausea and dizziness. So how it works is it blocks messages to the part of the brain that controls nausea and vomiting. Mm. And that's why it works. It generally works best when you take it before you start to feel motion sickness. Yeah. I remember Dorothy was saying that like oh, if she already right. feels it, it's yeah. hard to... It, yeah. Because it's blocking the signals in your brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So non-sedating antihistamines like cetirizine, which is the active ingredient in the in the drug that you take for allergies, okay. those do not cross the blood-brain barrier. So they won't be uh, effective in preventing or treating motion sickness. Mm. Oh. Yeah. So you can't just take any... Similar for the last times when we talked about different antihistamines, you can't just use it for everything. Mm. So different types of conditions or diseases, you need to take different kinds of antihistamines. Yeah. Mm. There's also an alternative pill available with the active ingredient hyacin hydrobromide. So this is an anticholinergic drug. So uh, it also okay. works the same way. Yeah. It relieves the symptoms of travel sickness by stopping the signals sent from the vestibular system to the vomiting mm. center mm. of the brain. Yeah. Mm. So basically all these seasick pills, they work by blocking the central nervous system yeah. and preventing you from feeling the nausea and the dizziness and the vomiting reaction. Mm. Yeah. So I guess besides seasick pills, another thing that we were talking about is does going into the water or swimming pool on the cruise ship help? Yeah. I searched this and <laughs> I am very, very, very shocked that I cannot find anything to support this study. So I was like, who told me about this? Uh-huh. I only found one article. Uh-huh. It doesn't explain how it works. So basically what it says is you should go into the water entirely, in the swimming pool entirely, with your head submerged and everything for it to work. But it doesn't explain how it works. And, and how long must you do this for? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but okay, basically... Until you grow gills? I feel like... Theoretically, it will work. Like, my theory is correct. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's just not in the top 10 things you should do when you're having motion sickness. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know how legit this is. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, it's just that I'm always too sick to move to the swimming pool. <laughs> I'm like, can't, can't even change into my swimming costume and go. You, know? you have to take the pills before you feel it. <laughs> I know. But oh, but I guess that's the thing, right? How do you know when, how regularly must you take the pills? I don't right? know. Ask the doctor. Yeah. Okay. This is on the prescription box. Yeah, it should be. <laughs> okay, so besides going into the pool, we were also wondering whether you can train or condition yourself to overcome mm-hmm. motion sickness. Yeah, so I looked into this. So there are many weird training things that people suggest you do but a lot of them lack scientific rigor as uh-huh. in a lot of them haven't really been tested on like either a large sample size or actually scientifically tested uh. mm. so um, there's this one called the desensitization th- therapy which I think a lot of therapies based as in a lot of um, different type of behavior or, or training based therapy users but it sounds terrible and I don't suggest anyone use it because again it's not scientifically proven it's the one where you have to expose yourself to short bursts of the actual phenomenon so you you purposely giving yourself motion sickness like mm-hmm. reading on the bus or reading on the car whatever gets you motion sickness you do that and you keep doing that and over a period of time your brain kind of just gets used to it you know it, it understands that this activity shouldn't be triggering motion sickness and then eventually they say you would stop feeling it or you feel it less but I wonder how much you have to do because I've been trying to read on the bus or in a car since I was a child. And yeah, so that's why I say like this method doesn't really have a lot of scientific rigor. Mm. But the one that more recently came out that was done by researchers in the University of Warwick, they use this method that uses visual spatial training on motion sickness. Okay. So what they do is basically you need to do tabletop paper-based activities. It's like you, you just do quizzes and you, you train your brain to see things in like... A 3D environment so yeah so it's very interesting because it's like there's nothing to do with motion sickness there's nothing to do with you experiencing motion sickness or whatever it's just Uh very tabletop based training and they have found that doing this for 15 minutes for like two weeks people who did the training showed that there was a 51% decrease in motion sickness in a simulator Uh and then a 58% decrease on the road so slightly better in reality and then that was 
crazy to me. They just need to do some tabletop exercise, visualize 3D objects in their oh brain. Oh my goodness, I really want to try this. To, they'll be able to overcome or rather reduce motion sickness. Did they release yeah. the, um, the visual spatial yeah. training tool? I want to see like a video of them doing it because I don't really picture what's Yeah, happening. so it's a lot of the things like... Um, it's those like cubes that is this way and then yes, yes. which cube is the, the same cube. cube. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So, yeah, it's like which the I'm IQ really test. bad at. Is that why I have bad motion sickness? I have no idea. <laughs> but oh they, they said... So a, a part of this study that I felt was a bit lacking was that the placebo group, basically, they, they didn't do anything. They did absolutely nothing. Uh, to, should they have been doing math or something? Yeah, I, I don't know. Because... <laughs> Brain stimulating <laughs> activity, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I don't know if it's a placebo effect kind of thing, but they did control for it. It's just, I, I don't know how strong it is. Like, mm. It's just, I find it very interesting that yeah, doing these visual spatial quizzes and, and whatever, 15 minutes a day would help you uh, in 3D space. I really I mean, want to try yeah. this. <sighs> To go to Warwick. <laughs> mm. I think you can find, you probably can find visual spatial quizzes online. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, yeah, I think there's those games where you have to visualize yeah. the thing uh, or so. Yeah. I wish Rich quit. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I really hate those quizzes. <laughs> you know, we're doing a personality quiz and then, yeah, yeah. yeah oh it's my just goodness. Too many. Yeah. Okay, I guess I didn't really know how the motion sickness remedies work. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's good to know that a lot of things have a scientific background to it. Cool. And as usual, follow us on Spotify and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Giving us a like and a comment would help us a lot. You can also follow us on our social medias, Instagram, Twitter, and even Facebook. And feel free to DM us any questions. Alternatively, you can email us at thelabdoctors at gmail.com. If you like this podcast, please share it with your friends and family. We would really appreciate it. Bye. Bye. Sounded kind of sarcastic. Bye. (laughs) Keep it in. (laughs)